The doom and gloom we hear on an almost daily basis when it comes to real estate probably has many of you out there pretty scared or at the very least anxious. Even if you haven't been directly affected by the current market, you no doubt know someone who has a horror story or two to share, don't you? Well, among the scariness is someone who believes we should not run and put our heads in the sand. In fact, he's made a name for himself by bucking the trends, overcoming adversity, and forging his own path to real estate success. Along the way, he's been called the real estate rock czar by the Wall Street Journal, the king of ready-made dream homes by USA Today, and he's appeared everywhere from 2020 to Oprah as a real estate artist and daredevil. He is none other than Frank McKinney, and he's going to be sharing his positive and very useful insights with us as part of our new series, Real Estate for Real Women. Welcome, Frank McKinney. Good morning. Good to be here. And aren't we tired of all this negativity? And I, you're right. I've made a living being a contrarian, having a PhD in paradox ecology. Mm -hmm. You know, when everybody's running for the exits, I want to calmly walk through the entrance. All right. So let's talk about what's made you so successful. Well, first of all, I started with a $50,000 fixer-upper back, t boy, 20-plus years ago, almost 25 years ago now. I bought a crack house in a really bad part of town. I fixed it up, but I didn't look at it as a as a home. I looked at it as a piece of art. I really did. I put three coats of paint on instead of two. I put grass, new grass sod down instead of mm -hmm, grass seed. Mm -hmm, I put a new mm -hmm. roof on. And listen, I made it the nicest little crack house on the block. Right, right. But, and we sold it and made, a, made it a nice profit. And I realized, you know what? I am an artist. I mean, I've always wanted to be an artist, and mm -hmm. I took my artistry, and I applied it to these homes, and now today, some 25 years later, we just sold the world's most expensive certified green home, Aquiliana. Tell me more about that. It's amazing, because you talk about the fact that you are an artist. You've got that artist look. You've got the artist hair. You've got the artist swagger, the artist dress, and you're applying this to your real estate investments. Tell us about Aquiliana. Well, once we got done with the first-time homebuyer houses, we moved to the ocean. Not okay. physically, but I started doing houses on the ocean, the ultra, catering to the ultra-wealthy. Mm -hmm. We've done 36 projects now with an average selling price of over $14 million. Aquiliana, I believe that the ultra wealthy are very cognizant of the carbon footprint that they are leaving or even perceived the, as even leaving. Even the wealthy, because that may not be the perception the of a lot of people out there. The perception is that they are the over consumers, mm -hmm. the poster children for greed and excess. That is not the case. I know that they're concerned, and so what we did is showed that when you can build an environmentally responsible mm -hmm. home, yet 15,000 square feet, seven bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, but that house has a carbon footprint, a home of about 4,000 square feet. Stunningly beautiful, one of the most beautiful homes you will ever see in the world, Danielle. Sold it in a time when people said we shouldn't have been able to sell it in this economy. Sold it in a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. Sold it for nearly full price. So the pundits and the naysayers that I have been arguing against for my entire career mm -hmm. were proven wrong again. Okay, that's opulent, that's extravagant, it's absolutely beautiful, but I know that you also have a philanthropic side as well. Tell us about that. Well, you know, there's a wonderful life mantra out there, regardless of your religious preference, or even if you have one, that is, to whom much is entrusted, much will be expected. Luke 12, 48, it's a great passage mm -hmm, in the Bible. It is. I live by it. And listen, you strip all this fanciness away, all this opulence, I'm in the housing business. In 1998, we decided to provide housing to the most desperately poor and homeless people that didn't have a home. Now, many years later, we have been in Haiti since 2003. Mm -hmm. We've built 15 villages there, mm -hmm. consisting of mm -hmm. over... Well, housing for 7,000 people, uh, desperate, the most desperately poor and homeless people. So I simply take what I do. I get to be a modern-day Robin Hood, Danielle. I get to sell to the rich. I don't steal from them, although at $2,000 a square foot, well, there some you people go. say they do. <laughs> there you <laughs> we go. Steal from them. Yeah, but yeah, we don't, we don't yeah. steal. We, we take from the rich. Yeah. We sell to the rich. And then we get, go to Haiti, primarily Haiti. We do have domestic involvement with homelessness, but Haiti is the poor. We're very active in the cholera outbreak right now. Mm -hmm. we, we're sending over these water filters that filter over 100 gallons of water a day uh, per filter to try to save lives over there. After the earthquake, we were the first search and rescue team to land on the ground over there from the United States. So, yes, there's a, there's a contrarian. I mean, I, I enjoy what I do for the ultra-wealthy, the gift that God has given me professionally, but the spiritual gift, everyone has a professional and spiritual sure, highest calling. Sure. I love answering that spiritual highest calling through our caring house. So let, let, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the average person out there. What kinds of advice, what kinds of tips can you give the average person out there with regards to where we are in the real estate market today? Because I know that you have a, a no fear approach and in fact a very positive approach. Tell me about that because a lot of people, I have to tell you Frank, there's a lot of fear out there right now. I, I, you know, let me correct you, I am afraid. But I don't let fear stop me. There's a big difference. I'm not going to advocate that people go out there and try to shun fear and pretend like it doesn't exist. You can't do that in the society in which we live. The bombardment of the negativity permeating the airwaves, is, we can't rid ourselves of that. What we can realize, if we can strip away some of the realism and say, you know what, maybe now would be a better time to think about buying a house because of the de depreciation and value that we've just gone through over the last three years. It's going to bottom eventually. Do you think we're closer to the bottom? 
or the top. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think we're a lot closer to the bottom. What I want the viewer to, to consider really is that, you know, women are very much a part of the decision making process when it comes to not only what color the kitchen's going to be or the bathroom, what our mortgage payment's going to be, how many years should we take out a mortgage for, 15 now or 30 years? Now more than ever. I've now been in the business 25 ever. years. I travel the country with my books. I can't tell you, for, for every 10 people that come up and ask me a real estate question, six of them are women now. Ten years ago, it was two out of ten. And it's not, women see things in three dimension. It's very clear. And so, yes, they want the beauty, beautiful house for their, to raise their children. But what's the, what's the smartest way to buy this house? Should I wait a little bit for more depreciation? Should I take advantage of the home buyer tax credit? Should I take advantage of the 4% interest rate? They're asking really, really smart questions. And what I like is, is that they're not as fearful I think as some of the men are. They're, they're being a little bit more practical. All right, so you're going to be on our show on a regular basis with our Real Estate for Weir, Real Women series. What, if you could leave our viewers with one piece of advice, what would it be? Exercise your risk tolerance, your, your, your risk threshold. Exercise that like a muscle because, Danielle, eventually it will become stronger and able to withstand greater pressure. Don't let fear stop you when it comes to making a decision, a very smart and sound decision. The, the American dream, that's not for rent. The American dream has been for sale. And I want more people to own a piece of the American dream than be fearful, sit on the couch, and think I have to rent it for the rest of my life. All right, I want to bring you home with me. Good advice, friend. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was wonderful. Thank mm, you. It was great to have you. And as we mentioned, we'll have more of Frank McKinney's unique real estate insights and future real estate for real women segments. So be sure to check them out. And you can also check out his website at frank-mckinney.com. Some great stuff there. And great stuff here as well, Frank. Thanks again.